Hello, Janine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine too. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interview you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, friends, we have Janine Lowry here. Uh, she is co founder, creator, and leading expert in freeing others to awaken. Um, this um, we'll, we'll ask about uh, Janine's method in a while, which is trademarked, right, Janine? So their unique gifts, uh, she helps people to free others and then their unique gifts and step into their authentic self using Janine's method based on healing the wounded child guides you to reconnect with your child essence, the sacred you, where all solutions reside. An award-winning international best-selling author, skillful subconscious facilitator, and world-renowned inner child specialist. She trains clients and practitioners globally with her method of releasing original wounds while continually embodying and demonstrating a simple truth that anything is possible when you believe. That was wonderful. So how, how did you get into uh, inner child work? What, 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 uh, please share your story behind this. Well, um, I think that I've always been the kind of person, even from being a young child, who was um, very empathetic. Mm -hmm. I was always engaged in um, other people's emotions and feelings and what was going on with others. Um, I was also extraordinarily um, engaged in the, imagina the imaginary oh. world, <laughs> I guess you can say. Uh, my child essence was always very alive within me and I was um, really into the arts, the visual arts, uh, my creative side, everything. And yet at the same time, um, I would say I had somewhat of a wounded child uh, childhood where, you know, parents were divorced and I had somewhat of um, an unpredictable early childhood predicament. And so um, for me, I was kind of already engaged in having um, an understanding of what it felt like to not be emotionally resourceful in certain areas <laughs> because I was living it myself. Um, and so when I went into go to college, um, I was really interested in, um, actually I began to look into art therapy. I already knew that I was really interested in healing and the healing arts. Um, I became an art teacher as well. And uh, from the very beginning studied human behavior and psychology, but mostly it was for my own growth and my own well being, and to kind of go through and heal myself, my own journey. And so I would practice and I would study um, and I would look at all kinds of different resources. Um, and so I started out with a psychology background um, and I went the whole you know, gamut with um, formal education in psychology, also um, backing it up with art, originally becoming an art therapist. But at the, at the time when I thought about being an art therapist, there was only one school in the entire world that was doing art therapy. So I thought, what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get a job. <laughs> so- What about my career? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, what am, but I was really, I thought there's really something to this because my creative side knew that there was such a, there was, it, there was healing for me to go and engage in the arts. I always found that um, something within me felt like it was being expressed. Expression was huge for me. If I can create in some way, if I can even write or um, share in some kind of modality, there was a part of me that felt really balanced. And so I, I knew there was something to it. The psychology aspect merged with, um, with the creative arts was, was very beneficial for me. So I thought, wow, this is incredible, but it really wasn't being done. Um, I didn't realize at that time that what was so incredible about it was that it was touching in on, on what I would now deem as that inner child space. So I went on, obviously, I always had a knack for working with children. There was something about the child that I just felt alive around. Um, yeah, I, and I realized I was connecting with that part of myself that was not being engaged. So I went into art education and I became an art teacher for um, 11 years. And 
I loved my job. I loved working with the children. I loved that aspect of it. But also the psychology part of me, the part that was so fascinated and engaged by human behavior was recognizing and, and literally studying what was going on with the young minds of children. Um, I was seeing how patterns were taking form in early childhood, um, how they were, were, um, were somehow beginning to form what we would now call the ego identification. Um, and all of these things, I just really um, was studying them without recognizing that I was studying them. There was a fascination with what was going on with children um, and how they would process information, how they would process their identity, um, and whether or not they were in a, in a resourceful state when they were younger to actually move through some of the things that were going on with them. And so long story short, I left my teaching career when I had a child and he had a very traumatic birthing experience. And there was a lot of trauma associated with being pregnant um, and him being born. And it kind of brought up for me um, a lot of moments where I had to go back to my own early childhood <laughs> experiences. <laughs> when you become a mother, it is, it, or a father for that matter, um, it brings us face to face with if we have any wounds, it's going to show, it's going to resonate. And these are our trigger moments. Um, and so I went through, I went through some pretty tough experiences. Um, and I recognized that I wasn't healed in certain aspects of myself. Um, life will show us, I think, pretty prominently the areas where we still need to work on. Um, and so for me, uh, it was really about my son came down with a rare autoimmune condition that attacks the brain. We finally had him diagnosed at the age of four, um, and then the journey began. And I tried really, really hard to work with him externally with different modalities and doctors, and I wasn't receiving any answers at all. Um, and then in a moment, I just broke down and thought, maybe I'm not here to change him maybe him in this situation is here to change me. Wow. And it was at that point. Yeah, it was, That's a breakthrough. And thank it was you a breakthrough for moment. Sharing your story without masks. And I appreciate that. <laughs> you know what? That's what this is about. This is, this is about releasing the mask. This is about, um, and we do get into that in the child, in the, in, you know, the inner child work is that um, sometimes when there is trauma, the, um, a way for us to, cope with that trauma um, is to create a false reality, is to um, basically dissociation is big when there's trauma. And so it's safer to live in the fantasy or put up the mask or the wall. Yeah. And so when we begin to realize that it is safe for us to come out, for the child to come out, we don't have to do that anymore and we can safely express. And that's where the balance comes from. But um, yeah, so there was that moment, there was that moment of um, realization that this wasn't about him in this, in this case, I can show up for him, I can help him, but how I help him is I first have to go and I, help, I have to help me. Um, I have to find my own space and my own balance in this. And so that's where the, that's where the work began. And that's where I realized um, in, a, in a moment um, where it was my inner child that needed to be worked on. And then that's where it began. So that's how world leading in a child healing expert was born. <laughs> awesome. And um, okay, you have shared your story. And uh, if we connect beautifully, psychology, your own inner child, uh, uh, childhood wounds uh, due to parents' divorce and all that, you went on to become psychologist and art therapy, then working with. Uh, children, then your own son helps you to identify the unhealed part of you, and then there's emerge what a story. Um, you know. And now tell me, please, um, you are uh, emphasizing, yes, uh, I also resonate with the uh, inner work of this inner child healing and all that. Yet, I have one question on behalf of so many practitioners or uh, common people who are not aware. When some this type of work is done, you know, is there possibility of a person getting re-traumatized of all the childhood uh, memories and all that? So this is a question, and thank you for asking that, because this is one of the number one reasons why most people will not go into this type yeah. of work. 
Um, oh, I don't want to talk. I don't want to think. Well, this is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, and yet, because the child essence um, is the most vulnerable place that we could go. And yet we have to go there. This is the place where it's the root. And so when I began to notice it, again, I studied, I studied human behavior and I recognized there's not a sim single human being out there that isn't still working through an original wound. Mm -hmm. And that's why we feel it's something that we cannot, and, and it's not gonna go away. We can't skip steps. We basically stay stuck in that moment in what you would call trauma. And now trauma is also very subjective. Because a child, to a child, tra traumatic is anything that causes them to be in a state of fear where they are uncertain of the outcome of the situation. Um, it could be anything from falling off a bike um, to what we would deem as, you know, culturally, we, call, we, we have a bucket of things that we consider traumatic. So sometimes we actually have repressed wounds that we don't recognize are even wounds, and yet the child is... Um, really guarded in that area. So what we do and what I've um, managed to utilize the tools in this work is we don't actually go into any past memories. We do not revisit trauma by going back to a traumatic experience. There's a few reasons why. One reason is because of exactly what you said. We don't want to re-traumatize anybody. The other reason is because um, memories are exactly that, they're memories. And once the, once the situation has passed, we don't necessarily have it back again. We have the energy that's associated with a traumatic experience, but the actual memory of it, well, we have something called distortion and deletion. And we can delete things and we can distort things. And especially when there's trauma, a lot of the times somebody can check out. And so they're not fully present in that experience, but the emotion sets in. So how we do that is we will look, if a client comes to me, um, I will look at what is showing up right here and right now in this moment. That they are safe enough to handle. They're an adult now. You're in a safe space. Can you handle the energy of what is showing in your life right now? And most of the time is, yes, I can handle that. Can you work with the emotion of how you are feeling right here in this current moment? Yes, I can handle that. And that is not revisiting a past memory when you were a child. It's working through a current emotion, which is actually the same thing. It's the same revisiting of the same emotional experience as what you would have gone through in original traumatic as a child. But you are now merging the adult self. It's safe enough to be able to work through this as your adult self alongside that child essence to let them know it's safe that we can work and put with this emotion and finally process it. So that's how we do it. So revisiting, no, but understanding why we're experiencing this same current emotional pattern is important. Okay. So uh, you have uh, authored a book on the similar topic. Could you please tell more about that book? So I actually, um, I write a series of books. I actually write what I would say adult books for children <laughs> or children's books for adults, yes. whichever way. Um, and so I started out writing as a, um, a children's book artist, um, author and illustrator. And so I do this work where um, I kind of share these these things that when I was a child, I, I didn't really have a place for. Um, I was confused in regards to um, how to process certain things that I felt I believed in, but the world around me didn't have a place to show me that that existed. So I write and I, I write author and illustrate um, spiritual children's books, so you can say. Um, and one my first published book uh, is called Surprise, I Have Three Eyes. And it's about really our inner vision, the vision beyond the external reality. Um, and it kind of goes along the lines of beliefs and where how um, we can engage with the world based on our perception of reality, which is no different. It could be different, but my perception of reality um, is my own. And what you tell me is your perception is your truth and mine is mine. So it kind of gives that understanding that anything is possible if you truly believe in it. And um, of course, now I have another book that's coming out, several children's books, but another one that's coming out that um, is really emphasizing this work uh, that I share through the Secret to Life Institute on healing the wounded child and some of our philosophies and 
uh, where we came up with that. So. Awesome, awesome. And um, uh, next question is uh, uh, people with the wounded uh, childhood, uh, like with all this unhealed trauma, then no, I have uh, uh, as a coping mechanism, they fought the arts, they have learned to fight every situation, mask themselves, and uh, they feel that no, I need to be strong at, at one point. At one point, now enough of being strong, enough of fight, and they break down. Um, I have come across such people. No, I have to be strong, but a part of this wound will be kicking up. So, for yeah. such people, uh, like adults, what I'm saying mainly, any any books, um, uh, upcoming books for such category? Uh, Actually, I yes, the this? book that I'm in the process of writing. Um, and like I say, process, because there's quite a process. bit to it. Yes, yes. Um, it will touch on that. And so what, what you're really referring to is what I would call, um, these are the defense mechanisms of um, what would happen to a child who is in trauma. And there are several defense mechanisms. We have the fight or flight. That's pretty much what you're discussing. The fight or flight will happen um, as a way to... Um, it's a safety mechanism. It's, you know, I either have to leave or I have to fight. I have to actually protect myself. This is self-preservation. These are protections. Um, we, have, we have several of them. We have what we would also call fawning. Fawning is when you have, um, and I used to, this used to be my number one. I used to actually, I, I found that I would kind of fall into all of these categories. I would have fight or flight. Um, and I would, I, I would, I would do a lot of these. Um, but this, we have some of those that kind of come up as our go-to's. And so, if I had somebody that was um, not particularly kind to me, or they were putting me in a fearful state, my first reaction was, "I have to be really nice to them. I have to win them over. I'm going to send them flowers. I'm going to be really sweet. I'm going to put on the the kindness." Um, and so, for a child, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because who would want to be, who would want to hate on this, this very lovely person? Um, they don't want to continue to abuse somebody who sees them in a, in a, in a kind space, who's loving towards them. It was really a defense mechanism. It was a protective mechanism. So that, um, you know, for early years, if I had a traumatic situation, um, I saw that if I was just kind to somebody, then they would break down, then they would stop acting that way. Um, so I, that was a learned behavior. Um, the other one is freeze. So this is, um, sometimes you have people that they will react. You see this in very traumatic situations where they will react with fighting or, or action. And then there's the complete opposite, which is freeze. Um, and this is when we just stop dead in our tracks and we just don't move and we, we almost, we stop. We've seen this sometimes <laughs> it's a, with predators and animals where a rabbit will be running, you know, and sees that there's something coming after and then we'll just stop in the middle of nowhere, like a rock, frozen. If they just don't see me, then I'm safe. So this is another defense mechanism that could be taken on by the child. The other one that is not commonly discussed, but I um, speak about this one in, in my upcoming book is forget. And so all of these mechanisms are part of dissociation, of okay. separating from the trauma. This is not, this is not the same as flight. Flight is I'm like checking out, I'm leaving, I'm gonna leave the scene. Um, that, that's what I would call the runner. This is legitimately blocking out a complete blockage of a memory. And we have this happening sometimes even where somebody will completely forget that they said certain things. They don't remember at all. Uh, uh, they've completely obliterated it from their mind as if it never even happened and yet are still living with the um, energetic imprints of the trauma, but have no understanding. It's almost like amnesia. And so the freeze is also something that um, becomes really important because that's, that's pretty entrenched in there. So um, what do we do about these defense mechanisms? How do we honor them? Um, we work very much with, again, the energy of what's showing up in the moment right now. 
and we work with what we can see and we work with the emotion because it doesn't matter of the memory. These are defense mechanisms and anything that is going to trigger any um, circumstance now that's gonna show in your reality is going to trigger these defense mechanisms. And so if you see in your current life experience that you are having a reaction to something where you are um, having any of these, um, pictures, if you are, you know, you're in the fight phase or the flight stage, you can look at that in this current situation and say, okay, um, take a moment and reflect on that and recognize that you must be touching on an original wound. And this is how you respond. This is how you react. And the way that you can kind of dismantle that is look at what triggered it, what is triggering it. And then you can become, it's about awareness. Of course, we need to first um, look at how we are showing up in this and become very aware of our behavior in it. Awesome. Uh, such a great work you are doing, Jenna, and it's really, I should use the word liberate. <laughs> so it is really, and, and of course, I see a Buddha behind you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <have> the <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And uh, what kind of uh, different services you offer? Like, you know, a person comes like, first of all, uh, before going into the service, how does a person first understand that they have this internal wound? What are the manifestations of that? Before coming to you first, they have to know that they have these things, right? Uh, of course. I think that, um, you know, uh, we all have wounds. Yes. All of us. We're human. We cannot escape pain. It, this is this is the understanding that we have here. Yet we try very hard to. Um, it's not possible to escape pain. Um, the question is, when we experienced an earlier wound, were we able to process it? And most of the time, by no fault of anyone's, this is not um, a reflection that we had. Um, bad parents or, or caretakers. This is just that most of us, just due to the con human consciousness, we don't know what to do with certain things that come our way. Um, and so it's a relearning process in that. How do we know that we're experiencing something that we still have an original wound? We look at our current reality. We look at our feelings. We look at what's showing up. We look at um, our general I don't want to use happiness because happiness is a baited word. Happiness comes and goes just like, just like anything else does. Peace. I think peace and harmony and balance. How are we handling the things that are coming into our life? How do we feel about the present moment? Are we at peace with what's showing up? And because what shows up isn't always what we would deem as perfection. It's not always going to be the story that we want it to be. How are we showing up in that story? Are we at peace with it? Are we able to work through what comes up in our moment? Um, are we um, in a space where we can process it in a healthful way? Um, and when I say that, it, you know, obviously the wounded child is generally the one, if we're not at peace with it, that will be showing up in those, in those situations. Um, and they're usually the ones that are showing up through emotional thinking. Um, and so emotional thinking is a very different place. And so if we're thinking emotionally, which is different from feeling in your heart, emotional thinking is more based on a woundedness, um, then we'll be, it'll become very apparent. Uh, usually people come to see me um, because they want to find that peace and they recognize there's something, um, you know, it's a common, it's common. Most people go to therapy and counseling, uh, it, it comes up all the time that this is not something that originated now usually they go back and after a quite a bit of of talking and engaging and getting to the root they recognize this is something that began very early on in life that they still have feelings associated with something um, and it's still kind of showing up so okay thank you for that so that now people would understand how these wounds are manifesting and uh, okay uh, finally a person has made up mind okay let me uh, take help so what kind of various services are available for this category of people uh, well I work obviously I work one-on-one -on -one. I have a whole different uh, depending on I, I really do um, like to engage personally 
with clients, um, mostly because we're all so unique um, mm -hmm. in our expression. Um, and it's a very, once we get to the root of what the original wound is, it's actually a very simple method um, that I train and teach people how they can become their own facilitator of this work. Um, my goal is to give you life skills, is to give you the tools so that you can uh, leave uh, realizing that you're not dependent on me, that you are your own wealth of knowledge, that you have within yourself everything that you need in order to, to go through the ever-changing uh, tapestry and canvas of life. Um, and so um, I work one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, clients, obviously. Um, and then through the Secret to Life Institute, we are in the process of doing um, a, a I guess you can say a tutorial, a school um, where people can virtually um, download classes and workshops and trainings. We do group work. We also have some um, exciting new ventures that we're going to be inviting people out to Panama to do workshops and um, really engage. So it's, it's just different. Some people really feel like they, um, they do well with the one-on-one -on -one coaching with the support, um, especially with this child essence. Um, in the beginning, the child essence can really need the external support to kind of help guide um, until I help to train the client or whomever to become their own guide, their own parent, the adult self. So there's a two pronged process. And then we retrain to help the child establish a new foundation and new beliefs that are not based um, in the old foundation. So, okay. And any plans to uh, certify people in your uh, work to become practitioners? Or Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, I think we're we're working on that for sure because it really is um, a vital element, I think, to healing work. Um, it really is. It's the foundation. It's the foundation. And I think that if our beliefs are rooted in early childhood conditioning, um, and there's four fundamental principles that I speak of in this work that are essential um, for the, the wounded child or any child to feel that they are healthy. Um, they need to be heard. They need to be seen. They need to feel like they belong. A sense of belonging is very important. And they need to feel like they are unconditionally loved and accepted for all that they are. And so we find that in, um, uh, I, I actually have other practitioners that would come to me and say, hey, I'm, I'm doing this technique and it's not holding. Um, I have a client several months later that's coming back. They're still having the same problem that's revisiting. Um, we've gone over this. We've shifted their beliefs. I don't understand why this is coming up again. Um, and I would say, well, uh, if the foundation was not worked on with the child, and there was something that the child is still working through that needs to be heard, seen, validated, um, or their beliefs aren't really there because they, we didn't work with the, with the foundation, which is the child, we're still gonna see these patterns showing up. So I think for practitioners to use this as a foundational tool and really look at this as when our wounds show up, it's not, it's, it's not the adult self that we're working with, it never is. It's the child who's coming up to the surface saying, help me. Because uh, a balanced conscious adult doesn't, doesn't need that. <laughs> the adult knows, the adult knows what to do. So essentially it's as if we're stuck in a part, our part of us is still maybe three years old, four years old. Um, and that part hasn't emotionally grown from that space. So for a practitioner to be aware that when someone is coming to them and they're going through something, let's just say a child has a wound where they were not heard for something, but we're trying to go into doing just uh, subconscious work and we're not looking at it. We're not having the conscious expression. That child is still going to feel like you're not seeing me. You're not hearing me. And so they're still going to have tan what I call tantrums. So it's going to touch on some aspects. It's not to say it's not going to do anything. It just won't have the completion that, that the client is looking for. So yes, it's very, we talk about this a lot um, and we hope to bring that forth um, to, to those that are in the healing work um, and therapy. And um, one last question, uh, like one or two tips for people who are wounded, if you could give 
one or two suggestions, what would that be? Well, I think um, the simplest thing, whenever someone is experiencing a wound, we have this beautiful mechanism within ourselves to go in immediately and work with that, mm -hmm. is to become yeah. conscious of it okay. and to recognize perhaps that the voices that you hear in your head when we have this wound, when we're feeling this pain, it seems like it's coming from an external reality, but it's really something that's living within yourself. Um, and I think the biggest thing to do is to bring that in, to bring the love in, um, to speak to that part of yourself, that child, and allow them to realize that first off, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve happiness, harmony, that you are special exactly as you are and perfect. You do not need to fix anything and that you do belong exactly as you are. Um, and so to just utilize the tools of just bringing in um, the voice of reason to that part of yourself, to that young essence that is feeling wounded in that moment um, and really speak very lovingly, gently and kindly to that part. Don't have to revisit any trauma, just sit with the feelings that you're resonating with that may not feel so positive in that moment um, and have a lot of compassion to that young part of yourself that maybe is very scared, afraid, feeling alone, or as if they don't belong and let them know that you see them, you hear them and that you are here for them. And most importantly, that you love them. So thank you very much for your time. And it was wonderful talking to you on one of the most essential healing methods and processes. And uh, uh, this, this may your work spread across <laughs> and many, many practitioners come out of this Secret to Life Institute and uh, spread this. And um, uh, once again, uh, friends, whoever is interested to seek help uh, personally with Janan, what I'm going to do is I am uh, providing all the uh, uh, website, other uh, social media links uh, in the YouTube description so you can directly contact. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you could find, um, you can find me at the secret to life institute.com. And this work goes all across the board. Um, we've worked with people that are in corporations, business entities, um, you know, partnerships children, marriages, couples all over the place, um, because that child essence and the pains that we feel coming through globally are really coming from what I would say wounded children. <laughs> so it shows up everywhere. Yes. <laughs> thank you once again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time.